It's not every day that you come across a system that gives you the ability to make girls fall in love with you. It may seem like a dream to most, but it was serious reality. He was an F-grade hero who was considered to be nothing more than demon fodder until, one day, he came across a system that would change his life. Apart from attracting powerful demon girls, the system also had another hidden benefit. It allowed him to level up. Join Cyrus as he goes from being the weakest hero in his guild to being face to face with the demon king himself. Cyrus is an honorable man who had recently activated his system. The system allowed Cyrus to lock onto any person and make them develop feelings for him. This also allowed him to level up and increase his attributes. Cyrus and a group of hunters found themselves in a high level dungeon. They were made to believe that the level of the monsters in that dungeon was low. Cyrus had made an effort not to use his system's unique abilities. However, when he encountered the monsters in that dungeon, he was left with no choice. A powerful demon queen named Yug tore through the human heroes like flies. She laughed as she defeated all the humans with ease, calling them weak and useless. One D-class hero named Bella told Cyrus to run for his life and escape since they were no match for the powerful monsters in that dungeon. Even though Cyrus was an F-class hero, he chose to stay, saying that he only entered the dungeon to protect the people of his city. The demon queen was visibly bored from fighting all those weak humans. Meanwhile, Cyrus refused to escape the dungeon. Bella noticed that his nose was bleeding and told him that even standing in front of those demons was enough to hurt them, so there was no chance they could engage in a fight. She said that their best bet was to try and escape. Just then, one of the goblins saw Cyrus standing in the distance. He pointed at him and told the demon queen that there was still a man standing. Without wasting a second, the demon queen and the goblins rushed at Cyrus to finish him off. Cyrus stood there without moving a muscle. As she got closer, he immediately activated his system and locked it onto the demon queen. The demon queen leaped towards him, preparing for an attack, but instead of attacking him, she unexpectedly kissed him. This was thanks to the power of the system. Bella couldn't believe what she was seeing and started screaming in shock. One of the goblins stared at the demon queen in disbelief and asked her what she was doing. She immediately got back to her senses and rushed away from Cirrus. She wondered why her body was acting that way and figured that it must be Cirrus's fault. The goblins started talking amongst each other and questioned if the queen was actually starting to like the human. Hearing this, one of the goblins shouted at them, saying that they shouldn't question their queen's loyalty to the king. Yug thought to herself that she couldn't let the king know about any of this. She ordered the goblins to attack Cirrus and kill him. One of the goblins reached close and shattered Cirrus's sword in half with just a single attack. Cirrus looked around to find himself surrounded by goblins. As he dodged one of their attacks, he realized that his defense was still weak. However, his attack power had been increased thanks to the system's abilities. He used his sword to hit one of the goblins, which actually caused some damage. Bella couldn't believe that an F-grade hero could have such power. Cirrus was expecting to slice the goblin in half with his attack, but it only scratched his skin. He may be in the F grade, but his confidence is in the S class. Suddenly, he sensed something behind him, and as he looked back, he saw the demon queen directly above him. Cyrus had no time to react, so she hit him with a kick. The kick set a small explosion through the dungeon. The demon queen pinned Cyrus down to the ground. Seeing him restrained, one of the goblins ran towards him, trying to finish him off. However, the demon queen used her tail to throw him back. She ordered all the goblins not to move. Otherwise, they would be killed. It seemed like she wanted to finish him by herself. The goblins got excited and started cheering for the demon queen to kill Cirrus. The demon queen opened her mouth preparing to kill him. But the system's power took over her again. Cirrus couldn't let his character be violated by a demon, but he had no choice. He decided to endure it for the safety of his people. After seeing this, one of the goblins questioned if the demon queen was really trying to kill the human. However, Another goblin shut him up by telling him that the queen was trying to find openings in the human's defense. All this time, Cirrus was increasing his stats. He thought it was time to fight back since he had leveled up enough, but the demon queen was quick to read his move. She stopped his hand using her tail and grabbed him by the neck. The goblins got excited once again, since they realized that the queen was actually trying to kill Cirrus. The demon queen got mad, and with a single strike, she tore off Cirrus's shirt and armor. Cirrus tried to stop her from getting any closer, but it was too much for him. He finally decided to give in and just focus on leveling up to defeat the monsters. As he was leveling up, the Demon King entered the scene. He was surprised to see the Queen with a human and asked her what was going on. It's time to hit the gym, bro. The system detected the presence of the Demon King and doubled all of Cirrus's attribute values. 
Seeing Cirrus with the queen, the demon king screamed in anger and charged towards him. He threw him back with a single slash of his sword, leaving behind a green trail. Cirrus fell back towards Bella, who asked him if he was okay. He was hurt, but he told her that he could still fight. Cirrus realized how powerful the demon king was since he didn't even notice his attack. The demon king then turned towards the queen and reminded her of the words she said last time. He had found her in a similar situation previously, and she promised him that it wouldn't happen again. However, there they were. Hearing all of his questions, the demon queen got furious and started shouting at him. She told him that it was all his fault, since he was too late. This shocked the demon king and the goblins. She basically pulled an Uno reverse card on the king. The queen explained that she only repeated her mistake, since he took too much time to get here. It wouldn't have happened if he had come a bit earlier. She then aggressively questioned him about what he was doing to be this late. The demon king started panicking and told her not to be angry. He said that he was dealing with some humans, and promised that it wouldn't happen next time. The goblin started discussing the king's affection towards the queen, since he had no shame in admitting his mistakes. This even inspired one of them to confess his feelings for their love. As they were talking, Cyrus saw an opportunity and tried to make an escape with Bella. Cyrus asked her if she could walk since she was injured, but Bella told him that she was fine. Meanwhile, the queen was still pointing all of her knives at the king, even though she was the one at fault. The king finally decided to put an end to it and told her that he was going to kill the human. He asked her if it would make her sad. The queen replied by saying that she was eternally bound to him and there was no way she could develop feelings for a human. In other words, she gave him the green light to kill Cirrus. As the demon king noticed them getting away, he shouted at the goblins to capture them. One of the goblins told him that they couldn't go after Cirrus and Bella since the queen had ordered them to stay put. This annoyed the king, and he decided to finish the job himself. In a split second, he leaped towards the two of them and stood directly in front of them, blocking their path. The king slashed his sword towards Cirrus, throwing him back again. This attack was even stronger than the last one and caused many of his ribs to break. He realized that he was no match for the demon king. Not giving him any time to recover, the demon king went for another attack, which was meant to split him in half. With death looming above his head and no way out, Cirrus decided to use the only card he had. He knew he had to increase his stats, or the demon king would kill him on the spot. He quickly locked onto the demon queen using his system, and just before he was slashed in half, she slapped the demon king, causing his attack to be missed. The demon king couldn't believe what had just happened. Cirrus was wise enough to utilize this moment and started running away. However, the demon queen wasn't going to let him off this easily. She pushed back the king and ran straight towards Cirrus, pinning him to the ground once again. The demon king tried convincing Cirrus that he wouldn't make the same mistake again, but the queen had none of it. The demon king couldn't take this betrayal and fell down on his knees. Meanwhile, Bella charged the queen, telling her to let Cirrus go. Her efforts proved to be useless since the demon queen easily captured her. The demon king was having a mental breakdown. He screamed at the queen, calling her a liar, and went straight towards Cirrus, trying to kill him for the third time. Just as his sword was about to slash him, the queen came in the way. The demon king couldn't kill her since he still loved her. So he started crying and drew his sword back. Seeing no other way out of this situation, he initiated self-destruct mode, which made him emit a bright green light out of his body. Before his body could explode, Cirrus came in clutch and performed a swift body slash attack on the demon king. This made the self-destruction stop. The queen remembered that he hadn't self-destructed last time either and called him a weak man. However, the demon king immediately leaped at her and stopped her from moving. He reminded her how she promised to die with him and enabled self-destruct mode again. The queen screamed for her life, calling out for someone to save her. Just then, she saw a sword cutting through the king's head, giving her a chance to escape. Cyrus tried pulling her away from the explosion along with Bella, but the queen wasn't so lucky. The explosion wiped her out and caused Cyrus and Bella to be thrown back a few meters. After it was over, Cyrus noticed a salamander sitting on him. It was the demon king. At least he looks cute now. His new form wasn't nearly as strong, so he quickly ran away. Cyrus saw a system notification pop up, which informed him of the Nai dungeon map that he had just earned as a reward for killing the Demon King. The system asked Cyrus if he wanted to open the map. Cyrus thought for a moment and pressed yes. The map provided a detailed view of all the paths and traps he had to go through to enter the boss room. Bella couldn't see any of this, so she asked Cyrus what he was talking about. He told her that it was nothing and the two prepared to get out of the dungeon. Suddenly, Cyrus felt a strong pain in his chest. He fell down to his knees and started puking out venom. 
The venom started spreading throughout his arm. It seemed to be corrupting his entire body from within. He shrieked in pain as his finger melted away to the poison. Bella felt helpless, as she couldn't do anything to reduce his pain. By now, his back had also started bleeding, and the pain was getting worse. Bella realized that Sira's body was getting hotter. It almost felt as if he was burning. Slowly, his finger gave in to the poison and melted away. With it, the pain also disappeared. Cyrus tried getting up and told Bella that he was fine now. She asked him what was happening and why his finger suddenly melted away. Cyrus explained to her in a low voice that he was poisoned. It happened six months ago when the monsters attacked the city. Cyrus saw them fighting one of the heroes from the guild. The monsters were fighting amongst each other to acquire a box. As they fought fiercely, one of the monsters slashed through the box, slicing it in half. The fight was so intense that it literally knocked Cirrus out of the area and beneath a huge pile of rocks. After the box cracked open, blood rain started falling on the city. The stench was unbearable, and it made breathing difficult. The rain melted the monsters outside, but since Cirrus was under a pile of rocks, he barely survived. However, he still got poisoned due to the stench and woke up inside a hospital. The doctor told him that he only had a year left to live. The poison was killing him from the inside. Just then, the system popped up for the first time and told Cirrus that the blood of the demon god could cure the poison. Cirrus was confused since he hadn't experienced anything like that before. The system gave him a choice to bind with it and to become a player. In return, the system would guide him to the blood of the demon god. Cirrus didn't really have a choice. If he ignored the poison, he would die soon. Therefore, he chose to accept the offer and became a player. The scene shifted back to the dungeon, where Cirrus was explaining everything to Bella. He told her that the cure for the poison was somewhere in the underground dungeon that they were in. However, before they looked for it, they needed to get some weapons and change clothes. The scene then changed to a bunch of heroes walking in a large hall. As they walked, one guy stepped on a tile and it triggered a trap mechanism, killing him on the spot. Seeing this, the rest of the squad got terrified and started to panic. The squad's vice captain told everyone to stay calm and not move from their spots. He told them that it was possible they might trigger another trap if they continued to move recklessly. The person who had just died was named Claude, and he was their strongest defender. The man was destroyed in a second. If he didn't proceed carefully, there was a high chance that they would all be killed. They had already sent Cirrus and the other low-level heroes forward as bait, so they didn't have anyone left to send forward. The squad captain, Cyrus, told them that according to the rules, the person with the lowest rank should go forward. Hearing this, Mamui, a degraded hero, tried to run for his life. However, the captain stopped him and reminded him of the punishment for not obeying his orders. Just then, one of the guys took out a tiny arrow and told Cyrus that they could use it to find the way forward since it could bounce. Without having a second thought, Cyrus cut the arrow in half. He got mad at the man and told him not to show his worthless creations in the future. He then ordered the low-ranked guy to move and find the path forward. The man was so scared that he could barely walk. His feet trembled with each step. He slowly went to step on the next tile, but it didn't trigger the mechanism. He sighed in relief and started thinking about which tile he should choose next. Meanwhile, Cyrus shouted at him from behind, telling him to hurry up. The man carefully made his choice and was once again saved from the trap. However, he could only depend on his luck for so long. He got scared, and just as he took one step back toward his squad, he was snicked by a laser. Seeing him lying dead on the floor, Cyrus ordered the next lowest rank to come out and lead the way. Suddenly, the squad saw the gates to the end of the hall opening. Cyrus turned back to see Cirrus and Bella coming out of the door. The men told him that they were from the decoy team, which was sent forward earlier. Cyrus wondered how they managed to survive since the decoy team was meant to be killed. He got furious and asked Cirrus why he was still living. The scene then changes to the day before they leave for the dungeon. Cyrus and his crew held Cirrus with a sword at his neck. Cyrus was mad at him and asked him how he knew about his wife's personal stuff. Cirrus nervously told him that it was thanks to his training. He was able to perceive things beyond the capabilities of normal humans. This answer didn't satisfy Cyrus, and he raised his sword, telling him to reveal his relationship with his wife. One of the men told him to stop and reminded him that it was illegal to kill someone in the city. It's only illegal if you get caught. Cyrus couldn't take the blow in his character and told them that he would give them a live representation of his training. After taking a single glance at them, he told all of them the color of the underwear they were wearing. Hearing Cyrus say the color of his underwear, one of the men advised Cyrus to kill him. I bet he was wearing pink underwear. However, the other guy told him not to do it since it only meant extra trouble for them. 
It was then decided to put him in the decoy group and use him as bait. It would help them get rid of him without having to dirty their own hands. The scene shifted back to the present, where Cyrus was wondering how he ended up meeting the raiding party again. He thought that they might have gotten lost on their way. Cyrus called out to Cyrus and ordered him to come towards his squad. One of the squad members told him that there was no need for him to come over since they could just use the passage that the two of them followed to go to the other side. With a straight face, Cyrus told him that they had already suffered huge losses, so they couldn't turn back now. He said that he was doing it for the sake of their team. He then called Cyrus again, who was still standing by the gate. Bella tried to stop him, but Cyrus told her that they were the captain's orders. He opened the map using his system and began walking. The squad members couldn't believe that an F-grade hero like him could predict the mechanism of the traps. In reality, the system was guiding Cirrus through all the traps and telling him the way forward. They thought that Cirrus was just too lucky. He was now at the last few steps. He almost stumbled but then quickly regained his balance and made his way back towards the squad. Everyone was in shock, including Cyrus. They were starting to believe that Cirrus was relying on intuition alone. However, upon reaching the other end, he told them that what they saw was a result of his training and not luck. Cyrus quickly put a sword to his face. He didn't believe his words one bit and was convinced that it was all simple luck. He ordered Cyrus to lead the group since he was so confident in his training. As they walked through the dungeon, Cyrus identified a poisonous mushroom. The mushroom had special properties that allowed monsters to buff up their stats if they ate it, but to humans, it caused diarrhea. Cyrus picked up the mushrooms, but he knew he couldn't take a bite since he was human. Just then, Cyrus walked in and asked him what he had in his hands. He snatched the mushroom from Cyrus and ate it in an instant. He told him that all the resources in that dungeon belonged to him and his squad, so he shouldn't steal anything and just get to the front. Cyrus led them to the gate and told them that they could open it since there were no traps behind it. Cyrus didn't believe him and ordered him to open the gate himself. He told him that he wasn't going to let his more capable squad members get killed by running into some traps. So Cyrus was left with no option but to move forward. As he opened the door, Cyrus warned everyone to be on high alert. All of them watched the gate open up slowly. The effects of the mushroom were starting to kick in now. Cyrus felt his stomach to be a bit unstable. Meanwhile, Cyrus had walked out of the gate. Cyrus asked him if he saw anything. He was starting to realize that his upset stomach was a result of the strange mushroom he had eaten earlier. He decided not to engage in intense movements since it could cause a massive disaster. Cyrus realized that the mushrooms were taking effect, so he smirked and told them that the area was probably filled with traps. He started running and told them to keep up with his pace. Seeing him run away, the rest of the squad followed. Most of them didn't even know why they were running. Meanwhile, Cyrus couldn't hold it in any longer, and he exploded. The squad smelt something bad and thought that it must be poison from one of the traps. To save face, Cyrus shouted at his squad and told everyone to run. After they crossed the hall, he called out to Cyrus and asked him if he knew about the properties of the mushroom. Cyrus pretended to be oblivious and acted like he didn't know what was going on. One of the guys told Cyrus to sit down and rest, but he got furious and told them that they needed to keep moving forward. He then pointed his sword at Cyrus and warned him not to run again. Cyrus continued leading the way and took them across many monsters and hidden traps. Cyrus was confused as to why they hadn't triggered any trap mechanism or face any monsters. He wondered if Cirrus had been to this dungeon before, but he quickly rejected this thought since Cirrus was only a level F hero. There was no way for him to survive this dungeon alone. Cirrus told them that they were almost in the boss's room. Hearing this, Cyrus said to himself that Cirrus had no use left since they only needed him to guide them ahead of the traps and monsters. He took out his sword and without anyone knowing, slashed a rock from the dungeon's ceiling. The rock was directly over Cirrus, and if it landed on his head, he would die instantly. It was the perfect plan to frame his death. However, fate had other plans. Just as he was about to be smashed by the rocks falling from above, a monster shoved Cirrus forward and attacked Cyrus using its tail. The rocks fell between the squad and Cirrus, separating them. Cyrus managed to dodge the monster's attack using his sword. On the other hand, Cirrus was trapped on the other side of those huge rocks. As he was analyzing his surroundings, he saw a demon girl walking towards him. She noticed that he was a human and called him disgusting. That's some emotional damage right there. Outside, the Scorkin monster was facing off against Cyrus and his squad. Upon seeing the monster, the vice captain immediately ordered the squad to fall into its formation. The archers shot their arrows from behind while the tankers were in front. The arrows flew towards the scorpion and fell on him like a hailstorm. 
The scorpion's shell was strong enough to protect against the arrows, so he tanked all of them. He created a giant airway with one of his attacks and pushed the arrows away. The squad was terrified at how strong the scorpion was since it was able to generate such strong shockwaves with a single attack. Upon seeing his men standing there staring at the monster, Cyrus shouted at them and told them to engage. Even though the scorpion was powerful, it was still alone, which meant that they could take it down if they worked together. On the other side of the rocks, Cyrus wondered if he had heard the voice of a monster. Suddenly, he was attacked by the tail of the scorpion. He barely dodged the stinger and saw the monster coming at him with full force. Cyrus had a split second to react, but all those buffs had made him quicker. He dodged the scorpion's attack quite easily. As the scorpion missed his attack, Cyrus found an opening and punched him with all of his might. The attack was so powerful that it went straight through the monster, creating a large hole in his body. He had killed the scorpion with a single hit. The monster girl was named Sadie. She saw that Cyrus had destroyed one of her puppet scorpions. Meanwhile, Cyrus is thinking about the antidote to cure himself from the poison. The demon girl looked at Cyrus with disinterest and told him that it didn't matter that he killed the scorpion, since she was planning on disposing of it anyway. She didn't like things that were touched by humans. The girl told him that she wanted to kill him using the scorpion. But now she had to do it with her own hands. Hearing this, Cyrus reminded her that they were not playing fruit ninja and that he was not a fruit that she could slice easily with her hands. The girl told him that she didn't even need her hands to beat him. She could use one of her hands to kill the humans outside since she was the one controlling the scorpion. This made Cyrus mad, and he told her that he would stay there and fight since it was his duty as a hero. Cyrus activated the system, but Sadiel was quick to attack him using her legs. She pinned him to the ground and used one of her hands to control the scorpion puppet she had on the other side of the rocks. However, even in this helpless state, Cyrus was able to lock the system onto the demon girl. Outside, the monster was fighting the heroes by itself. Bella realized that she hadn't sensed any movement from the rocks for a bit. She started worrying about Cirrus, and wondered if he had been rendered unconscious by the pile of rocks. She called out to Terror and told him to cover her, and she went for the rocks. Before he could say anything, she quickly rushed towards the pile of rocks. However, the monster was able to catch up to her speed and almost took her out. She was saved from the scorpion's attack by Terror, who blocked it using his sword at the last second. He continued to distract the monster while Bella made a run for the rubble. As she got closer, she hoped that Cirrus was okay under those rocks. Meanwhile, underneath the rubble, Cyrus had managed to free himself from the clutches of the demon girl. The system had locked onto her, and he was starting to increase his attributes. Cyrus couldn't use his instant kill skill on the demon girl since he wasn't holding any weapons. He knew he had to use his fists to win this fight. However, the level difference proved to be too great. The demon girl easily dodged his punch and kicked him straight in the face. Cyrus was thrown back a few meters with this kick. However, by now, the system's effects were starting to show. The demon girl was slowly losing more and more control of her body. She realized that she had to kill him now since he was just too bothersome to be let any further. She lifted the scorpion's stinger and shoved it straight towards Cirrus. His agility had increased by a lot now, so dodging the attack was no big deal for him. He then focused all of his magic energy on his hands and broke the scorpion's tail in half. Suddenly, he got attacked by the demon girl again. This time, he was unable to dodge it and got caught. She held him down to the ground and started strangling him. The system's locking ability started to show its effect, and the demon girl began to lose her momentum. She got a bit too carried away, which caused her to lose control of the scorpion puppet outside. The squad saw the scorpion shaking and thought that it was starting to get weaker because of their attacks. The scorpion regained its abilities and immediately attacked Bella. She was thrown to the ground. Cyrus was standing close to her, so the monster went after him next. He barely managed to evade the attack using his sword to maneuver in a way. The stinger hit one of the dungeon walls and pierced it through. As Cyrus was focused on the monster's tail, he forgot to keep his eye on the scorpion itself. Before he could see it, the scorpion had reached close enough to deliver his final blow. Cyrus realized that he couldn't dodge the attack from this distance. He was about to take a direct hit from the monster. However, just as the monster was about to finish him off, it stopped and started twitching. He saw a perfect opening and quickly used his special move to slash the monster into pieces. The attack was powerful enough to throw back the monster. The squad members cheered for their captain as they saw the scorpion getting beaten. Cyrus didn't know that he was able to defeat the monster since Cyrus was keeping the demon girl distracted. She couldn't use the scorpion anymore. He saw the monster lying on the ground and started walking towards it. Cyrus told everyone to stay out of the way and witness the strength of an A-level hero. As Cyrus was busy finishing off the monster, 
Cyrus was gaining more and more stat points by locking onto the demon girl. As Cyrus went close to the monster, it grabbed his sword, but he realized that the monster was still pretty weak. He used his final move, the Sacred Whirlwind Slash, which caused the monster to fall down. It wasn't actually his attack that took him down, but to his whole squad. He was the one who brought the scorpion down. They started singing praises for their squad captain. Cyrus himself joined in and started complimenting himself. He said that the monster was a mere punching bag for him, and he defeated it just with a single slash of his sword. Inside the rubble, the demon girl was locked in with Cyrus. She suddenly heard a voice calling out to her. It was her boss. Nahayi the boss asked her why it was so noisy outside. This made her panic, and she got back to her senses. She had forgotten about Nahayi's command and realized that she must kill all the humans as quickly as she could. However, as she turned to face Cyrus again, she saw a completely changed man. All the increased stats had turned him into a beast. With the dangerous aura surrounding him, he asked the demon girl if she still wanted to play with him. The girl got scared since she sensed that the aura emanating from Cyrus was entirely different. It gave her the same oppressive pressure as Nai's aura. Seeing him towering over her made her scared, and she started to run for her life. Cyrus saw her run away but decided not to go after her since he had bigger things to care about. The antidote that he had been after was just inside the room ahead. Outside, the squad continued to praise Cyrus for taking down the monster. Ignoring all of them, Bella ran towards the rubble to look for Cyrus. However, as she got closer, he kicked his way out of the pile of rocks. She started asking him if he was injured, but he assured her that he was completely fine. Cyrus called out to all of them and told them to follow behind him. He announced that he would be the one to kill the boss, and he wanted to do it alone. By the strength of that scorpion monster, Cyrus assumed that the dungeon was D-level at best. If he defeated the boss alone and informed the guild about his achievements, there was a high chance that he might be promoted. I have a feeling this isn't going to end well for him. The scene changed to the demon girl who knelt before her boss, Nai. She told her that there was a powerful human outside and that she should be careful when dealing with him. Nai asked her what she commanded her to do. Hearing this, the demon girl got a bit nervous and told her that she had been ordered to guard the door. Hearing this, the boss asked her what she was doing here. Before the demon girl could say anything, Nai snipped her with a laser. This boss must be good at the call of duty. She told her that she didn't have time for her excuses and threw the demon girl straight into a pile of corpses. These corpses were meant to be used as firewood by the boss. Nai laughed as her efforts were finally about to bear fruit. She had sacrificed thousands of human bodies and countless monsters. And now the blood of the demon god had finally started to boil. Nai's cooking session was interrupted by Cyrus and his squad as they broke through the wall like the FBI. Cyrus confidently told Nai that he was there to beat her up. The system notified Cyrus about the blood of the demon god. He wondered if it could actually cure him. Meanwhile, Cyrus was still full of himself. He told his squad to sit back and let him do the job. As he prepared to attack, the men cheered him on from behind. The blood of the demon god was under the protection of Nadi. She cast a strange spell around the area. Cyrus rushed at her while laughing and aimed his sword straight at her head. He was going to make it look easy. However, as fate would have it, Nai wasn't as weak as he thought. She launched a powerful fire attack using only one finger. The fire burned through Cyrus' armor and knocked him back. His squad members were shocked. They quickly ran to help him. Meanwhile, the boss wondered how Cyrus was the strongest man. She had mistaken him for the man Sadia was telling her about. Cyrus lay on the ground thinking about the attack's ridiculous power. It melted his A-grade armor like a steel. He was lucky to be wearing an S-level armor that his brother gifted him. Otherwise, it could have ended badly for him. He started wondering what was wrong with the power level of monsters in this underground dungeon. Cyrus knew that he couldn't fight with the boss head-on, so he decided to use his men as bait to weaken her a bit. He commanded all his men to charge straight at the boss with their weapons. Terra objected to this plan and told him that it would be better to approach the boss in their usual formation. Cyrus got mad at him and shouted at him to shut up and follow his commands. He then ordered all men to charge and told them that he would be their support. The men started charging towards the boss with all of their weapons. Seeing this, Nai felt disguised since these humans were not even worth becoming the firewood for the demon god's blood. As she prepared for her attack, she told them that she wanted to teach them the difference between monsters and humans. Suddenly, a gigantic beam of fire melted through the entire squad, killing half the men in an instant. Cyrus was able to save Bella and Tyre thanks to his incredible speed. Cyrus watched as his sword turned into a knife due to the sheer heat of Nai's attack. She started flying and asking if he was going to make her feel terror. 
Cyrus knew that there was nothing he could do against a monster this strong. He turned around and tried to make an escape. As he ran, he shouted at the rest of his squad to retreat. However, it wasn't a good day for Cyrus. He was stopped in his tracks by Cyrus, who reminded him of what he had just said a few moments earlier. He told him that the boss was still alive, which meant that he couldn't leave the dungeon. Cyrus tried to push him away, but Cyrus's grip proved to be too strong for him. Nai saw the two of them arguing and prepared to launch another fire attack. This almost gave Cyrus had a heart attack, and he started shouting at Cyrus to let him go. As Cyrus refused to obey his order, he tried punching him, but it didn't work. Cyrus simply grabbed him by his wrist and told him to stick to his words and support his teammates. He then threw him directly in front of Nai's attack to act as his shield for them. As Cyrus tanked the attack, the rest of the squad members made an escape. Cyrus decided that it was his turn now. Among the squad members, only Bella and Ter were still standing with Cyrus. The two of them refused to run away. Seeing them standing, Nai got furious and asked if they were looking down on her by not running away. She lifted her hand to attack them, but before she could launch it, Cyrus slashed her hand with his sword. Nai was surprised at how quick he was. As she prepared to fight him, she noticed that he was running away towards something else. It finally hit her. She realized that his goal wasn't to kill her, but to go after the demon god's blood. Cyrus ran towards the altar while Bella and Terra tried to engage the boss. Tyre saw that now he was looking at Cyrus, and he took the opportunity to attack her. Unlucky for him, she had four arms, so she zapped both of their attacks using her two right arms. At the same time, Nahi used her left arm to attack Cyrus. Not gonna lie, she would make a great bartender. Before she could launch her attack, Bella slashed her with her sword, which caused her aim to be missed. Cyrus barely survived getting hit by the fire. He ran as fast as he could, and when he finally got close to the altar, he realized that the demon god's blood was protected by a magical shield. He tried to touch the shield, but knocked him back. The boss told him that she created that magical shield to protect the demon god's blood, as long as she was alive. No one could cross onto the other side. Cyrus finally realized that he couldn't just go and drink the demon god's blood. If he wanted to acquire it, he needed to get rid of Nai. As he was thinking, he saw a glimpse of a girl in the corner of his eye. Bella and Tyre were getting beaten by the boss since she proved to be too powerful for the two of them alone. Cyrus went inside the opening and saw the demon girl hiding there. She looked injured and in pain. The demon girl pleaded with Cyrus not to tell the boss about her. Cyrus heard Nai's voice outside and realized that Bella was in danger. He took out a mushroom from his pocket and gave it to the demon girl. After giving her the mushroom, he rushed outside to save his friend Bella. The demon girl shed tears as she ate the mushroom. She had started to develop feelings for Cirrus. It was one of the system's requirements for a certain weapon. Cirrus saw a notification telling him that his requirement had been met. The system showed him a variety of different weapon options and also gave him a detailed explanation of the rules for those weapons. However, Cirrus had no time to read those rules, so he skipped them and went straight towards the weapon selection phase. He was given multiple cards to choose from. The weapon he ended up choosing was called the Exploding Garment Divine Sword. He immediately utilized the weapon by attacking the boss. But to his surprise, she grabbed his sword with her hands. Even though the boss managed to block the attack, the sword still did what it was designed to do. It tore off some of her clothes. I don't want to know who manufactured the sword. Cyrus tried to attack her again, but the boss dodged it easily. He realized that his previous attack had touched the boss, which caused her clothes to burst. He needed to do it one more time if he wanted to win against her. After he hit her, he could take off her mask and finish her off with his ultimate move. The plan was simple, but the execution was very difficult. Cyrus decided to stay close to the boss and spam the swift body slash on her. Eventually, one attack would hit her. As he was scheming, the system told him that he only had the mana to use his swift body slash six more times. Moreover, the skill had a 10 second delay, which meant that he couldn't spam it continuously. Cyrus thought to himself that his skill was crap. The system asked him if he wanted to turn it off, but he wasn't that stupid. He decided to use his six tries as best as he could. He aimed his first attack towards her legs, but now he was fast enough to jump. She was annoyed since he kept targeting her legs. Cyrus went in for a second attack, but now he wasn't going to let him win this easily. She kicked him straight in the face, which threw him back some distance. The attack almost broke his nasal bone. However, to him, this pain was nothing in front of the pain his body experienced by slowly melting away from the poison. He counted down the seconds for his cooldown and went in for another hit. This time, he was able to get close enough for one of his attacks to hit. However, it seemed to have no effect on the boss. 
The boss said that she was never going to run away. She was holding back due to the fear of her body being revealed due to the sword. She told him that his speed wasn't enough to keep up with her and she could kill him a long time ago if she wanted. Cirrus looked up at the boss with a terrifying look on his face. The boss attacked him with her signature laser again. Cirrus tried to escape using the swift body slash, but it was still cooled down. He had nowhere to go now. He decided to face the attack head on as there was no other way to escape it. Surprisingly, he managed to block the attack using his sword. Tar couldn't believe his eyes when he saw him deflect the attack. He wondered if Cirrus was actually an F-grade hero. Cirrus rose up from the smoke of the blast with a smile on his face. He told the boss that he could easily counter her attacks now, so they were basically useless. Nayu told him that he was correct, even though it was hard for her to kill him. She had no need to do it since she could simply kill his friend Bella. Nayu immediately fired her laser at Bella, but Cirrus managed to slash her finger at the last second. This was all part of her plan since she used her other hand to attack Bella again. Cirrus couldn't stop the attack this time. Now, all he could do was to tank the projectile for Bella, or she would die. Cirrus ran as fast as he could towards her. Seeing him turn his back towards her, the boss attacked him and said that he was stupid to act as a hero. Halfway, Cirrus realized that he was too late, and there was no way he could reach Bella in time. In a split-second decision, he used the swift body slash and dodged the attack using his sword. The shockwaves from the attack shattered Bella's armor. During this time, Cirrus had accidentally activated his system to lock onto Bella. As the boss was getting annoyed at Cirrus, she realized that she had forgotten to add firewood to the altar. If the demon god's blood was not kept warm, she would have to wait another hundred years for it to boil again. In all of this, Bella started acting a bit strange. She tried to get close to Cirrus, but he immediately had traumatic flashbacks of eight-year-old Bella and pushed her away. Ter asked her what she was doing. But just like the demon girl, she was losing control over her body and mind. After realizing what she was trying to do, she got embarrassed, and her face turned red. Seeing her get all red, Tyre asked her if she was poisoned and experiencing hallucinations. The boss realized that if the demon god's blood was not heated soon, it would take another 100 years to boil. She couldn't wait that long, so she started taking out corpses from the pile, and decided to burn the demon god's blood completely dry. Her plan was to heat it so much that it would burn away. Cirrus saw this and realized that he needed to do something to stop it. However, he wasn't fast enough, so she could dodge most of his attacks. Cirrus was once again left with only one option. If he wanted to defeat the boss, he needed to level up more. If he could increase his level enough, he could reach a point where he would be able to trigger the ultimate move of his sword. This was his plan. And for it to be successful, he needed Bella's help. He went over to her and told her that in order to defeat the boss, the two of them needed to be intimate. I don't know how it works either, but it does. Before he could proceed forward, Tyre stopped him and told him that he didn't believe it one bit. To him, it seemed like Cirrus was trying to take advantage of Bella. He said that they were in the middle of a battle, and Cirrus was shamefully talking about such vulgar things. He told Bella not to trust him, but Bella was completely under the system's spell. She turned towards Cirrus and told him that she trusted his words completely. She tried to play it cool and said that she was only doing it because they had no other choice, and she definitely wasn't doing it because she wanted to. Tur almost exploded seeing them both about to engage in such an act. However, as soon as Bella got close to Cirrus, he started experiencing those flashbacks again. He immediately pushed her back. The system notified him that his stats had increased by 5,000 points. He took a sigh of relief and told Bella that they didn't need to do it since it was so difficult for her. Cirrus was going to defeat the boss without her help. Ignoring Bella's calls, Cirrus went straight towards the boss. In order to kill the boss, he needed to hit her head and legs at the same time. He previously managed to hit her legs, but now he is even more confident since his stats have increased a lot. Meanwhile, the boss was busy trying to keep the demon god's blood at the right temperature. She saw that the temperature kept dropping, so she decided to use the human body as firewood. She told them to be proud since they were going to become firewood for her altar. It was time for her to reveal her final form. She raised both of her hands and started channeling all of her energy into a giant ball of fire. Cirrus was mesmerized by the power and couldn't stop staring at the fireball. The boss fired the ball straight at him, and he had to dodge it with his sword. This attack was much more powerful than anything he had experienced until now. Even stopping the attack was enough to utilize all of Cirrus's mana. In the end, he was left with no mana. It meant that he couldn't even use his slash attacks anymore. The boss looked at him and told him that it was over. However, my man had the power of the system on his side. Bella grabbed him and told him that he needed her help if he wanted to win. 
After they were done, Cirrus's stats had increased by 27,500. The boss could sense the rising power levels. She was confused about how Cirrus was still able to fight back. Cirrus engulfed himself in the fire. He looked like a completely different person right now. The boss didn't want to admit that he was stronger. So she said that he was still a human while she was a monster. In front of a monster, humans were like ants. She told him that she could dodge all of his attacks. As soon as she finished her sentence, Cirrus slashed her face in half using his swift body slash attack. The attack cut through her face, leaving a big mark. With this hit, Cirrus had unlocked the ultimate move of his exploding garment divine sword. The boss screamed in pain, asking him how he could ruin her face. It's not like she looked any better before. The ultimate move infused all of Cirrus' power into the sword and took it out in a single attack. The shockwave literally shattered through the ground, destroying everything in its path. The boss burned in agony as she was directly hit with the sword. After the dust settled, Cirrus saw her lying on the ground. He told her that she lost. The system notified Cirrus that the cooldown for his sword's ultimate move was 20 seconds. He ignored the boss and ran straight towards the altar to get to the demon god's blood. However, to his disappointment, the shield was still up. He still hadn't killed the boss. Cirrus told her that he would take care of her in 9 seconds after the cooldown for his ultimate move was over. However, as he was waiting for the cooldown, he heard the voice of Tyr calling out to Bella. He looked over to see her in near-death condition. She was barely alive. The boss screamed at him, telling him that if he wanted to get the demon god's blood, he needed to kill her. She told him to bring it on so they could decide once and for all who was victorious among humans and monsters. However, Cirrus unexpectedly went for Bella, straight up ignoring the boss. He picked both of them up and ran towards the exit, hoping to take them to the guild's hospital. The boss was badly hurt and could hardly stand up. She saw that Cirrus had left with his friends and called him stupid since he could just kill her if he wanted. As he made his way out, he encountered a large monster. The monster blocked their path, preventing them from leaving the dungeon. Cirrus started having flashbacks of his past. A bunch of kids were making fun of Bella since she looked ugly. They mocked her and said that no one wanted to play with her. Cirrus was the only one who didn't say anything. A kid came up to him and told him not to go near her as it would make him ugly, too. Cirrus slapped the kid right on his face, well deserved. The scene shifted back to the present, where he was seen fighting the monster with all that he had. He even had to carry Bella and Tyra in addition to fighting the monster. Back to the flashback, Cirrus went over to Bella and told her that the game wasn't over. He told her that they could play husband and wife and said that he would take responsibility for her. Back to the present, he had her in his arms. He slashed through the monster and made his way towards the exit. Meanwhile, the boss was doing her best to keep the demon god's blood warm. As none of her methods were working, she decided to go for plan B and sacrifice herself. Outside, another monster showed up to stop Cirrus and his friends from escaping. It was a huge fire-breathing dragon. Cirrus managed to dodge its attack and use a swift slash to finish it off. After he killed the dragon, he noticed that the exploding garment divine sword had disappeared. The system showed him a notification that it had taken the sword back and that it would be returned after 12 hours. Cirrus didn't need that sword since he was already at the exit. Outside, the members of Cyrus' squad were excited about being alive. Cyrus himself had come extremely close to dying since he even lost his S-grade armor. He said that it was all Cyrus's fault and thought to himself that he would surely die to the boss. Just then, one of the men informed him that Cyrus was still alive. This made him extremely mad, and he took out his sword immediately. He screamed at Cyrus and asked him how he dared to escape with them. He said that it was his order not to leave, so he defied his command. Cyrus ignored all of this and ran straight over him like a train. The rest of his squad were left stunned and panicked about taking the captain to the hospital. The scene transitioned to the guild hospital, where we saw Bella being taken on a stretcher. Cyrus stood there watching her. He took a sigh of relief and decided to make his way back to the dungeon. He was a single step away from acquiring the demon god's blood and getting rid of the poison. Back at the dungeon, an entity started rising from the demon god's blood. The blood first rose to a massive height and spread over the poles like a sheet of cloth. The demon girl was watching all of this. She wondered what her boss had summoned when she decided to sacrifice herself. As she looked closer, she noticed someone's hands coming out of the sheet. This made her scared as she didn't know who it was. The demon girl could feel a haunting and chilling sensation all over her body. It almost felt like someone was stabbing her with needles into her bones. The clothes suddenly turned into hair, and a man emerged from within. He commented on how he could recognize the sensation and scent. This man was the demon god named Azathoth. 
Upon seeing him, the demon girl realized that it was too risky for her to stay there. She tried to make her way out of the dungeon, but the demon god spotted her and broke the entire cave wall she was hiding inside. The monster standing on the upper floor fell down as the floor below them exploded. The demon girl also found herself lying in front of the demon god. The monsters realized that the entire dungeon had collapsed, and they could see the sky. They wondered if Naive did all of that, but then realized that it was beyond her capabilities as well. They came to the conclusion that it was the man standing in front of them. Azafoth told them that Naive was dead and he needed a servant. The monsters wondered if they should make an escape now that Naive was dead. Suddenly, one of the monsters fell down on his knees and started pleading with the demon god to make him his servant. The other monsters joined in and requested that he allow them to serve him. The demon god looked at them with disgust and called them ugly. He immediately banished all the monsters from sight and said that he didn't need ugly servants. What he wanted was someone good-looking. He spotted the demon girl and told her to open her mouth. As she opened her mouth, he poured a green liquid inside her mouth and told her to drink it. After drinking the liquid, she began to feel as if her body was healing itself. The demon god told her that his blood had the ability to heal and repair all damage to the body. He then ordered her to find him a room since it was getting dark. Back at the guild's headquarters, Cyrus was getting the beating of his life. His brother was an S-rank hero. He was mad at him for failing the raid. Cyrus apologized and told his brother that he needed to come up with a solution. Otherwise, he was going to lose his position as the squad captain. He told him that they would be in trouble if the guild found out that they were illegally selling resources. His brother shut him up and asked him about the guy who disobeyed his orders during the expedition. Cyrus told him that his name was Cyrus. The brother told him that they should shift all the responsibility on Cyrus, which would cause him to be sentenced to death for desertion. As Cyrus came back to the dungeon, he saw that the demon god's blood was nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, the demon girl was waiting for Azathoth in the room she had found. As she met him, she realized that he had transformed into a girl. Azathoth saw her surprise and told her that she had lost all of her strength at night and reverted back to her true self, which was actually a girl. She smiled and told him that she needed to protect her during the night and kill anyone who dared to harm her. To make sure she obeyed her orders, Azathoth reminded her that she had consumed her blood. If she thought about killing her, she would simply make her body dissolve in an instant. Outside, Sirius had been looking for the demon god's blood like a madman. He didn't want to believe that his last hope of staying alive was gone. He tried convincing himself that the demon god's blood was somewhere in the city. In desperation, he opened the map and decided to search every inch for that antidote.